What's up, everybody? This is Alex Christopher from The Durant, and I have with me Alexander Mercurius, editor-in-chief of The Durant. And today we're going to be talking about Merkel striking a deal with the CSU. So, Alexander, Merkel is uh, safe for now, it seems. Uh, the immigration, her immigration woes... Um, have been, uh, that can has been kicked down the road for now. She struck a deal with uh, Horst Seehofer, um, the leader of the CSU, and he's also her interior minister, and uh, they've reached an immigration deal. Uh, this was after a, a very tense EU summit as well, um, a very contentious EU summit, and things were looking pretty bad for Merkel, but she survived uh, this latest, uh, I would say, controversy, this latest dilemma that she's uh, put herself in, really. Explain to us what this deal is with the CSU, and what does it mean for Merkel, and how much time do you think it buys her? Right, well, let's, turn, let's take to this, this, the, the last question first. How much time does it buy her? My guess is, and it's, it's of course a guess here, not very much. Let, let, let's just unpack what actually happened. Merkel went to the uh, European uh, uh, Council summit, having previously failed at an earlier summit that she called herself to hammer out an immigration deal to. She then went to the formal e European Council summit. She came back with what she said was an agreement and what we were all reading about was an agreement to, to, to uh, 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 which she said moves things some way towards Z Zehofer's position. Zehofer wants to put border controls basically on Germany, in Germany, to stop migrants coming into Germany in an unregulated way. Merkel said this, this moves somewhat in that direction. You and I had a discussion about that. We said it was incredibly vague. Various other countries have now come forward, the Poles, the Hungarians, the rest. They've all said, actually, nothing was in fact really agreed at all at the European Council summit. Seehofer came back and said, well, you know, this doesn't make any kind of sense. What is this agreement? Um, there was then problems within the CSU because some people in the CSU were very nervous about bringing down the coalition and holding new elections. And so what we have is another completely unsatisfactory botch. The idea now is that there will be some kind of controls on the German border in the sense that migrants will be, allowed, will be put in camps and will be processed there, but they will not be sent back to other European countries, it seems, without the, without the agreement of those countries. That is unworkable because it demands other countries like Italy to start taking people back. And they're not going to do it. So I think as night follows day, within a few weeks, this whole thing is going to unravel and we're going to be back at square one. Well, you, you, you touched on Italy, but there's also another country which actually you, uh, you mentioned to me before we were, we have this before we had this interview, this conversation, and that's Austria, and that's uh, Sebastian Kurtz, the young um, chancellor of Austria, who is also very anti-immigration, uh, um, anti, you know, open borders and the migrants pouring into Austria, and he's also securing his southern border. Explain to us the what Austria um, can do to to Merkel's fragile uh, compromise. Well, I think the first thing to say about uh, uh, Kurz is that he's now uh, uh, emerging as the uh, most important and powerful anti-Merkel politician in the German-speaking world. Because, of course, though Austria is an independent country, it is not Germany, it does have very strong political connections with Germany, and Seehofer and Kurz are friends. I mean, they are political allies. So to some extent, it looks as if there's some kind of uh, uh, understanding between them. Now, what, what uh, Kurt says is, look, if Germany's going to start creating these barriers to people going into Germany, where are these people going to go if the Germans aren't taking them? Well, they're certainly not taking, going to take, go to, to Austria. That's what Kurtz has said. So he is imposing what amounts to 
uh, uh, de facto border controls. So going back to an earlier discussion that we had previously about Schengen, mm -hmm. it is starting to look as if Schengen is beginning to crack. Even though Merkel is trying to paper over the cracks, she's looking for compromises all the time. She's trying to hold her coalition in Germany together all the time. It's becoming more and more difficult to, to, to square the circle. Uh, people within the SPD who have maneuvered themselves into a ridiculous position where they say that Germany should be taking migrants out of principle, even though that is hugely unpopular with their base, that's what they've essentially committed themselves to. They're not happy with this agreement between Merkel and Seehofer, in which they weren't per in which they weren't involved, and they're saying they may not rubber stamp it. So we, we could find very easily, I think, within a few weeks, this whole thing unraveling and coming back to Kurz, I think he could be playing a decisive role here. And, then, and that's the, the German Social Democrats, that's Martin Schulz's his party, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. Martin Schulz has actually been uh, uh, suddenly, uh, 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 surprisingly active. I mean, he basically came out and spoke out against this deal that Seehofer and uh, Merkel have uh, cooked up. Uh, 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 I mean, he said some incredibly uncomplimentary things about both of them. He said to uh, uh, imbeciles, I, that wasn't quite the word he used, but it was close to that. Mm -hmm. These two imbeciles have, you know, created this impossible situation. And, you know, we're supposed all to agree with it. And, of course, uh, he's got his own agenda. He's got his own ideas. He is a fanatical European integrationist. Let's be quite clear about this. So he doesn't want to see Schengen in any way broken up. And he fears that what Seehofer and Merkel have agreed to is the first step towards dismantling Schengen. So uh, we, we, it's, it's becoming very difficult, increasingly difficult, to see how Merkel can keep all of these pieces lined up. Um, I, I, I mean, she's unquestionably a clever and skillful politician, but I mean, she must be running out of moves she can make. Yeah, it's, it, it sounds like Merkel's just trying to plug up holes and, and the water's just coming through the walls. and. and <laughs> She plugs up one hole and it just, you know, spats out well, from it. <laughs> the water just comes well, up exactly. in a different area. I, 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 I think you've put it exactly correctly. I think that's exactly what's happening. And I, I, I'm going to say something else. I mean, so long as it is she who is plugging the holes, the holes are just going to keep on coming and they're going to get bigger <laughs> yeah. because Merkel is part of the problem. Yeah. She has been ch Chancellor of Germany now for a very long time. She is identified in the minds of many people in Germany with a set of policies which have created the situation. Uh, and she's also identified with those policies across Europe. And she's also identified with those policies elsewhere. I mean, many of the places where these migrant people are coming from, they're going towards Europe and to Germany because they think they've been led to believe that Merkel, who is the German chancellor, is on their side and she invited them there. So she is hanging on, and by hanging on, I think she's making this problem slowly, in fact, not so slowly, quickly, bigger and bigger. Well, she did invite everyone to Europe, let's not forget. I mean, exactly. I she mean, explicitly she did, yeah. invited every, yes. all, all yes. the migrants to Europe. Yes. And, yes. And, yes. And, and this is where the problem begins. So it begins with her, and it's going to have to end with her. And, and, and my final question, Alexander, is, Give, the way I see Schengen is that if Schengen goes, then the European Union kind of goes with it, because I think Schengen is, is a linchpin that it's, it's the underpin that holds the whole European Union together. And so what is what is the way out so that the European Union can come out of this intact? How, how do you see this you know, playing out so, so that the European Union doesn't fall apart and splinter? Uh, to be to be to be to absolutely frank, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm not sure that there is much of a solution, given given the problem that has been created. It, it's all very well saying, for example, that that you know European countries should be allowed now to start imposing their own uh, migrant policies and should be allowed to turn back people uh, um, who arrive uh, um, at their borders from outside the European Union. You know, that, they can do that. Unquestionably, they can, and there can be agreements to that effect. But the, what happens if different 
governments across Europe start following different policies. And we start going, having people turning up in, say, Greece, where, as we both know, the Greek Prime Minister, Mr Tsipras, is taking an even more pro-migrant position than Merkel is, if that's possible. And what do they turn up in Greece? And then the migrants there are, are, are invoke Schengen and try to go to Germany, or Hungary even, or, or, or Italy. What happens? I mean, I don't really see what sort of uh, solution there is. I mean, the other one, people have some, sometimes talked about that, would be for the EU itself to take control of its external borders. Um, that would be a massive step towards establishing a European superstate. The entire trend of politics in Europe at the moment is against it. So uh, I, I can't see that happening either. So we are in that, that sort of situation where I don't really see that anything can really give <laughs> to make this thing work. But, you know, maybe something can. But one thing I am absolutely sure about is if there is a solution, Angela Merkel isn't going to be the person to find it. The first thing you've got to do is you've got to recognise that Angela Merkel must go. I mean, she is a discredited chancellor in Germany trying to patch up a policy which people across Europe have rejected. And I think that maintaining this uh, uh, Humpty Dumpty figure, if you like, in Germany, who's had this great fall, but, but, but trying to keep her there artificially because of fears of what might happen if she goes, I think that's simply storing up more and more problems down the line. Yeah, I think I think you hit the nail right on the on the head. I think the the solution starts to come and starts to formulate the minute Merkel removes herself from from the whole equation. Uh, would that be a correct assessment? Well, I, 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 I'm not as I say, I'm not sure there is a solution, but certainly no solution can be found whilst Angela Merkel is there. I, 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 I think at a certain level, even she understands this, actually. Mm. What is preventing her going um, is, I think, the fear within the German political elite that if Angela Merkel goes, they will have to call fresh elections. And if those elections happen, the IFD will do it much better than it did before and that all of these various parties, the CDU, the CSU, and the SBD, are going to lose support and do extremely badly. So they're clutching on to Angela Merkel to put off the evil day when the elections happen. And of course, by doing that, they make sure that when the elections come, the disaster is going to be even bigger than um, it, it, it would have been if they'd held the elections now. Well, the, the Europeans definitely uh, have a reputation for kicking the can as far down the road as they well, can kick it to, well, to delay that. I, 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 I think what is needed yeah. now, I think, is some realism and some political courage. Uh, uh, let's give he, Zihofer his due. Apparently, he said to the CSU, look, we, we've taken this position. We must stick by it because if we don't, we are going to be looked completely discredited in Bavaria. And what happened was he ran into opposition from some members of the CSU who said, you know, if that happens and the coalition collapses and we have elections, we will do badly in those elections. So they sacrificed the principle to the political electoral expediency of the moment. As Seehofer correctly pointed out, if you do that, you are creating more problems further down the line. But we have a situation in Europe and in Germany where, as you correctly say, if people can go on kicking the can down the road, they will go on doing so until they finally run out of road. But I think we're coming to that point very fast. Well, let's hope we get there sooner rather than later so that, so that this situation clears up. Or, or, or absolutely, absolutely, because, I mean, this is an intolerable situation. Yeah, it's, it's intolerable, intolerable situation. for Europe. It's intolerable for Europe. It's intolerable for Germany. I was recently in Germany, and I saw how uh, uh, um, exasperated people are becoming there. Yeah, it's, it's been going on now for, for years, and it's become exhausting 
to, yes. to go over this, this migrant issue. And, and it really is tearing Europe apart amongst all yes. the other problems that Europe has, the well, austerity cool. and the financial issues. This is the last exactly. thing that they need. Absolutely. Absolutely. Alexander, thank you once again for a great analysis. Guys, if you like the video, click on the subscribe button down below. Also click the notifications bell to get notifications every time we push out a new video. Guys, visit the Duran shop, pick up a t-shirt, help support the Duran. Alexander McCurse, editor-in-chief of the Duran. Until next time, take care.